welcome to my channel where we talk about cool cars, cool technology, and alternative fuels. Welcome to my new electric vehicle. This is a 2008 Chevy HHR. I took some parts from the electric blazer from a few years ago and combined them with some new parts to convert this fine vehicle to electric power. Uh, we'll start in the back here with the most important part of any electric vehicle, the batteries. These are not uh, the same batteries by any means that were in the Blazer. These are Tesla batteries out of a Model S. This is half of a base model Model S, so 30 kilowatt, a little bit over 30 kilowatt actually, but the way Tesla badges their cars, a 30 kilowatt battery pack uh, that is wired to each Tesla module. This is a module, this kind of rectangular shape here. There's six of them, each of them wired in a series. Uh, for a fully charged voltage of 151.2 uh, given that uh, each individual little cell has a fully charged voltage of 4.2 volts. Uh, to the left is our battery charger. This is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt battery charger, so a little bit uh, bigger than it may actually be. It's been a few years. It may actually be a lot bigger than the one in the Blazer, but this can charge the batteries in about four hours. Uh, a give or take a little bit. It, it's not not quite uh, five hours, uh, but a little bit over four. Uh, if you're, and, that, and that's plugged into either a charging port or like a dryer plug or, or something like that. Uh, if you plug into a regular 115 volt wall socket, it charges at half the speed. Uh, so somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine hours, depending on uh, just how far down the battery charge is. Moving to the right, We've got uh, two little boxes. Uh, the one in the front is just a DC-DC converter. It's basically like the electric car alternator. It takes power from the big batteries and puts them in the little one for the 12-volt system uh, in the car. The box to the right of your screen, it's a battery management system. That is one of the unique things about lithium batteries. They are quite uh, cantankerous sometimes. Uh, they can explode and you really don't want that. So you have this management system that monitors things like temperature and current flow and voltage. It allows you to calculate how much battery percentage you have remaining easily uh, and also balance the cells uh, so they don't get out of balance and start causing problems and also it's for prolonging the life of the batteries. These batteries are liquid cooled uh, as well as air cooled. In the Tesla they are completely liquid cooled. Uh, I have a little bit lower flow rate. Now you can see the, the coolant in the line here, blue coolant. A little bit lower coolant flow, flow rate uh, and so I also put some uh, blowers there behind the, the wood. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Uh, it just looks like you're looking into the abyss but uh, trust me they are there and they do push some air down into the battery cavity. Now this is a battery cavity. I took the trunk floor out I dropped in the batteries. They're in a rack set up. So you got three and three and it's bolted. This is a, a unibody car. So the battery rack is just bolted to the frame that's part of the car. Uh, there's like a, a structural support, I guess, underneath there and not, this is not independent suspension in the back. There, there's no subframe in the back to bolt it. So it's just bolted to the car. Uh, and then I have some plastic sheathing that covers it and weatherproofs it and then I've sealed around the edges. Moving to the front of the vehicle, we've got uh, a few things up here. This is of course where the electricity meets the road. We've got uh, not an electric motor you're looking at. That's, that's not an electric motor. That's a generator. This is a backup power generator. And it can, it's a seven kilowatt generator. Uh, I'm only running the charger on the low speed setting, so half of what it's capable of. Just because this generator is old, this is the generator out of the solar panel, the early first solar panel project. Uh, so it's a little bit old. It can't quite uh, run the charger at twice the speed, but I had it. And so it's in here for emergency situations where you find yourself out of electricity and without a charging plug. To the left is a air conditioner compressor. This is something else that's different from the Blazer. This vehicle has heating and air conditioning. Uh, this is a compressor that you would find, uh, similar to what you'd find in a, a Toyota Camry Hybrid. Uh, it's the same uh, sort of Denso design. The, and that's uh, hooked up, I should say, to the factory evaporator and condenser. Uh, nothing else, just 
hooked it up, made some hoses. Uh, this is actually the uh, pressure switch from the Lincoln. Little bits and pieces from all kinds of projects in this one. Uh, speaking of where the electricity meets the road, this vehicle is capable of about 120 miles estimated range. I have driven 100 miles and didn't run out of electricity, so uh, presuming that the uh, calculations are, are somewhat right, 120 miles uh, should be about the maximum for this vehicle, and that was calculated at 70 miles an hour with the air conditioning running. Underneath the generator is where both the motor controller and the motor itself are. Those are the same motor controller and motor out of the latest version of the Blazer. So I pulled them out of the Blazer and put them in here. It's a three-phase motor. It's good for right about what the original engine in this car was good for uh, by the seat of the pants dyno. By numbers, it's, I believe, 88 horsepower, so it's a bit less. Uh, but you do have the torque right away when you hit the throttle, so it's not sluggish. The Blazer was heavy and slow. This this was too much, too little motor for too much truck, uh, and the gearing in the Blazer was also bad. This has a little five-speed transmission. Uh, it's in second or third gear, you can just leave it in, in either of those. Second gear is good for the city. Third will do city and highway without over revving uh, the motor. I did keep the uh, stock radiator. Uh, this is not doing anything other than holding the condenser and the cooling fan. That cooling fan does cool the condenser and also cools the motor controller and motor, which are right behind it. We'll see if we can get in there. Uh, so that little piece of metal that's flash rusting down there, that's the bracket that holds the controller. You can just barely see the top of the aluminum fin of the controller. But behind that controller uh, is the electric motor itself. Uh, yeah, you're just going to get some flywheel of the generator there. Let me see if I can slide underneath and uh, show you. This is a uh, quite a low-to-the-ground vehicle. Let's see if I can turn this the right way. There we go. So that aluminum piece right there, that is the motor. And then right, this is the transmission mount, right up in there is where that... Uh, uh, heat sink for the controller was so it is there <laughs> it's crammed in there it's there uh to the right is the uh factory uh brakes in front of those are for factory brake booster factory brake system um and then the factory fuse box this vehicle does have regenerative braking uh, you push brake pedal, it engages with the braking, and then if you need more brakes, you push, go ahead and push the pedal on down and engage with the hydraulic brakes. Uh, this vehicle, uh, like I said, factory fuse box. It maintains the factory GM electrical system. I got a key fob here for a GM vehicle. Uh, it's all the systems other than the, what was actually connected to the engine are still in the vehicle. I've interfaced with that system over the CAN bus uh, with my system, the electric vehicle system, which also has several modules like the charger, battery management system, and the motor controller on its own network. So all the electric modules, electric vehicle modules can communicate to uh, a central control board and then that can communicate to the dashboard and that control board can also communicate to uh, the rest of the vehicle. Uh, for instance, uh, to be able to operate the uh, factory dash and send data that uh, is from the electric vehicle system uh, and also the uh, brake module, ABS module, actually the EBCM as GM calls it in this one, it's hiding down here. It's a factory module, GM. Uh, this car came with a brake problem. Uh, not sure exactly what happened, but somebody was changing a bunch of parts trying to find the problem, and I think they changed the EBCM while they were at it, uh, so I had to change it uh, back because that one was not functional at all. So I got this one out of the junkyard. You saw the junkyard writing on it. Uh, you put it in. This happens in any modern vehicle. It's the woes of working on a modern vehicle. You put the ABS or any module in, you turn the key, and even if it's the perfectly the right exact thing with the right part number, and maybe you even bought it brand new uh, from the dealership, which you can't do with this module, which they say you have to do, but you can't because there's none in stock, which doesn't make any sense anyways. But you turn the key, you'll get at least one code for something like VIN program error, this is not the right module for this car. It knows that it's not at home in this car. This is a used module. It knows it should be in a different car. But because I've interfaced with the CAN network, I can just send it a message to say, okay, don't worry about that. And it responds with okay and turns the light off. So I uh, was able to use my system to, in effect, uh, 
get rid of a problem that uh, is not really the electric vehicle system at all. Alrighty, so firing it up. There we go. You'll hear some fans back there kicking on. Those are the, uh, I believe that's actually the charger. This thing's still plugged in, so uh, whenever it notices the battery is starting to drop down, probably because I turned the key on, put a load on the converter. Fired the charger up. Oh, turn, it, turn it back on so you can see. This is a factory dashboard. Uh, you probably saw that the ABS light turned on for a little bit and then went away as commanded. Uh, the brake light means it got the parking brake on. Uh, check engine light is you don't have it in gear yet, and of course, seat belt. I don't have seat belt on. Uh, the speed is. As you would expect, speed, the temperature is the overall average temperature um, of the hybrid vehicle or electric vehicle system. Hybrid electric, if you consider the generator. The fuel gauge is accurate. It's connected to uh, the control board and then the battery management system. The screen that you're seeing now is similar to the screens in both the Blazer and the truck. Uh, it's using just a, a standard Android uh, tablet that is connected over Bluetooth. Uh, to my control board. So my control board not only has CAN bus, but it has Bluetooth connectivity as well. And it sends some data there, uh, more like electric vehicle specific stuff, voltage, amperage. Uh, also, it tell you what gear you're in. You see if I put in gear, there we go. I have motor temperature, controller temperature, battery temperature, and then that slider is uh, exactly the same as the temperature gauge factory one. Same thing for the fuel gauge. Uh, they're just duplicated over here for redundancy. I got a fuel warning light there. And you see that little grayed out battery that'll turn red whenever I'm low on power. And we got motor RPM and GPS speed over here as well as a tripometer that resets every time you start up so you know exactly how far you've driven in that drive cycle. Uh, moving down a little bit, this is the factory radio. There is really nothing too special about this radio, but I did put Bluetooth in it. So if you're wondering whether you can put Bluetooth in the factory GM Panasonic radio, it can be done. Uh, air conditioning. Like I said, this vehicle has air conditioning. Uh, just like factory, you turn the knob, you push the snowflake, it turns on. Um, you won't be able to hear it, so there's no point in turning it on, but it does come on. Uh, moving a little bit down further, uh, GM put the window switches here. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, I've got a control panel here. This is for your, you know, easy to access, most needed controls to operate the vehicle. They are labeled with a little uh, label up in the uh, coin tray. Uh, this is the most important switch. You push it forward to go forward. You push it back to go back. This selects your regenerative braking. You can either have it on or off. Uh, this is your uh, drive mode selector. We'll talk about that in just a second. But you got eco, normal, and sport. And these two select your generator. This starts it. This brings it on the bus. Uh, and this is just ignition and it varies. You can have idle. This is idle. That would be high idle and that would be full send. Ready to go. Okay, coming up to the dashboard, you'll see that the uh, tachometer is reading 2,000 RPMs, but you don't hear anything, and the screen said zero. That is actually indicating the drive mode. That's eco, that's normal, and that's sport. All the way in the red, 7,000. I thought that was cool just to have that, but since the motor can rev above 7,000 RPMs, I came up with something else for that gauge to do. Um, an engine is disabled because there is no gas engine, so it is, in fact, disabled. It's gone. Uh, when you put it in gear, fires up power steering. You can see, I can just do it with one finger. Uh, this is factory for this vehicle. Uh, that was not, uh, that was by choice. I bought a car with electric power steering so I wouldn't have to fiddle with it. Uh, but trying to trick it into turning on when it's not got a gas engine in it is quite interesting. Uh, you have to uh, send the ECM a signal that says there's some facsimile of an engine here for it to send a signal to the uh, power steering to turn on. Uh, alternatively, there is also a CAN message that I can spoof to s turn it on. So a couple different ways that I was able to play with that and activate it. One last thing, this is the same kind of plug, I actually the same plug itself as I had on the Blazer. This is a J1772 uh, outlet. It's the standard uh, electric car plug that uh, everybody but Tesla is going to have. Uh, this does not have any kind of fast charging like uh, you know, the, uh, DC fast charging or Chad Bowl or anything like that. Uh, the, the BMS actually, I believe, is capable of communicating with a fast charger, but one, because of space constraints, trying to get the big giant cable down here, it's hard enough just getting something like this down in there. Uh, and also, because it charges so fast, I just went with the J1772 outlet. Uh, I have charged this vehicle from a uh, charge point charger. Works perfectly fine. Uh, charge the battery right up. 
I think that's about it. Uh, I've covered everything from charging and driving and putting it in gear and starting it up and steering it and stopping it. So I appreciate your time uh, taking a look at this. Hope you enjoy. Have a good one.